put on your tights and take a spoonful of responsibility because we just saw Spider-Man into the Spider-Verse. So let's get started. Hey everybody, Andrew Fantasia here. Welcome to Thumb Together. Thanks for tuning in. As usual, if you enjoy this video, please feel free to give it a thumbs up and give some love to that subscribe button as well. So a Spider-Man movie just came out and it's animated and Sony made it and it has nothing to do with the MCU and it's kind of amazing. If you would have told me all those things a year ago, I would have laughed in your face and that would have been very rude of me. You probably would have slapped me and then, you know, some fights would ensue restraining orders would get into the picture but i love being wrong about these kinds of things when we first heard about into the spider-verse i was like well, I don't know. that was my general thoughts on the matter but i'm so glad to have been wrong i'm so glad i went and i watched this because spider-man into the spider-verse is a spectacular look at one of the coolest superheroes to ever exist period but more than that into the Spider-Verse is a love letter to Spider-Man. And not just to Spider-Man, but to Spider-Man's fans. As big a fan as I claim to be, I actually haven't read a Spider-Man comic since like 1995. And since then, you know, those comics have just exploded and gotten really good. And a lot of people just keep singing their praises. Nowadays, you walk into a comic shop and you look at the Spider-Man corner... There's a whole bunch. There's not just Spider-Man anymore. There's lots of different shit going on there. And this movie celebrates that. It celebrates the absurdity of that and the diversity of that. And at some points, the downright good storytelling involved in all those different pockets of the Spider-Man universe. All of it comes together in a movie that you don't expect to work. And then it works. I can't explain it. It's like a little miracle. But if you have ever loved Spider-Man in your life, even just for like 40 seconds, if you've ever looked at a picture of Spider-Man or sat through one of his movies and or anything and thought, you know what, that guy's pretty cool. I like this. I'm having fun right now. If that has ever been you, Into the Spider-Verse has something for you. When I look back, you know, rewind two and a half years ago, Captain America's Civil War had not come out yet, but we got our first trailer where Spider-Man shows up and people lost their minds. People who didn't know Spidey was going to end up in the MCU lost their collective shit when he comes up at the end of that trailer and shoots his web and does some cool little things. Everybody loved it. Spider-Man is just that kind of character who has that lasting power and ever since childhood he just kind of grabs a hold of you and he says, hey come with me, I'm like your big brother, we'll go on this adventure, we'll shoot webs at some bad guys, we'll have a lot of fun. And that sticks with you. And yeah, maybe you get older and you move on and you're not into it you know, this silly superhero business anymore and all these tights and whatnot. Maybe that's not your thing. Or maybe you move on and you, you know, you just like other things. Maybe you're more edgy as an adult and you like Deadpool more or X-Men more or something. That's cool too. But Spider-Man was always there at the beginning. And this film reminds you of that. When it comes to comic book movies, especially comic book movies about very famous heroes like Spider-Man, Batman, etc. A lot of the time the press about the movie, the buzz regarding the movie before it comes out, really starts to revolve around who the bad guy is going to be. Now in all the Spider-Man movies that have come and gone, that question has popped up. You know, we get focused. Who is he going to be fighting in this one? Who's the villain? And you know, Doc Ock will show up or Venom will show up. It all depends on what the movie is. But this film was the first Spider-Man film where the villains didn't matter. It was about Spider-Man. And I think that's what makes it work. Because if this tried to be just like another Sam Raimi movie or like another version of like Homecoming where it was just a, a big epic Spider-Man adventure where he has to fight a big villain and lots of stuff happens, it would have slipped through the cracks of mediocrity and we would have forgotten about it by this time next month. But that thankfully doesn't end up being the case here. The villains in this movie are great and there are quite a few of them and I'm not going to tell you who most of them are, but they sit on the sidelines. The villains are not the stars of the show. We don't get lots of focus on what the bad guys are doing. This movie is about Spider-Man first and foremost. And because of the nature of the film, because of the nature of bringing together spider people from different dimensions, that's exactly what should have been the case. If you've seen any of the trailers, you know that one of the villains in the movie is the Prowler. I'll just say that. The Prowler is in this movie and he's one of the villains and he looks 
pretty damn cool. Uh, he has probably never been on most people's radar. He's more of a C-list Spider-Man villain at best, uh, but he has never been scarier and he has never looked cooler than he does in this film. The Prowler rocks. And of course there are other villains, but I'll save those for a surprise. You'll know them when you see them, and uh, they have their little moments in the spotlight. But what's important is that the spider people steal the show. Whether it's Gwen Stacy, the amazing spider woman, who comes in to save Miles Morales, or whether it's Spider Noir, who comes from a, an alternate dimension where it's always the 1930s, or whether it's Peter Porker, Spider-Ham, and he's literally a little cartoon pig in a Spider-Man outfit, it doesn't matter. You're never going to be looking at a spider character in this movie and not enjoy yourself. Every single one of them brings the smiles, every single one of them brings sincerity and depth, and it's all juggled in a way where nobody feels shortchanged. Uh, it would have been so easy to take a character like Penny Parker, who's just this little Japanese girl and a robot, and kind of relegate her to a couple of jokes here and there and that's it. But even with a short amount of time and a laser-focused story that is primarily on Miles Morales, this little girl and her robot still get their moments to shine, and they're powerful moments. That is not an easy feat for any filmmaker to accomplish. And when you're juggling six different spider people, and essentially six different spider storylines, and no small number of villains on top of that, when you're juggling all of this, it can be very easy to lose uh, the emotional integrity of a script, and it can be very easy to lose the concentration or focus of the plot. Neither of those things are lost, honey. You will get all of that in Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse, plus more. Anything you can imagine, plus more. And that's one of the reasons that I love this movie so much, is because it is chock full of stuff. Every frame has some sort of Easter egg in it, or some sort of reference, or joke, or something that ties into love of Spider-Man. And that's what this is all about. The credits, the end credits, shows animation of just nothing but Spider-Man everywhere. Like a big picture that looks like a Where's Waldo book and everybody in it is a Spider-Man. And that sums it up perfectly. That really sums up the tone of the movie. It's just a celebration of all things Spider-Man. Told through a beautiful lens with a great character in Miles Morales who, who really... He could have been the most boring one, but he's not. He steals the show entirely. This is Miles' movie and he rocks it. I also think... It's very fitting that Spider-Man was so synonymous with his co-creator, Stan Lee. Stan Lee and Spider-Man always just went hand in hand for me, as I'm sure they did for a lot of people. And Stan was very adamant about the message of Spider-Man and what Spider-Man meant and how, you know, not only did great responsibility go with great power, but also that the mask is a symbol that anybody, even you, could be Spider-Man, could uphold the virtues of what Spider-Man stands for. And Stan understood that. Now, this is the first movie he has cameoed in since his passing. And I think that I couldn't have asked for a more fitting film in that regard. Because this encapsulates everything Stan stood for when he wrote for the character. And the message that he sent to his readers all the way back in the 60s to now... It rings loud and clear. It, it, it's essentially the moral of the whole film. That Miles Morales, you know, he thinks he's a nobody. He thinks he's just some kid who doesn't really have a place in the world. He's just trying to figure his own shit out. That he can take up the mantle of the Spider-Man and not only succeed, but understand the power and responsibility of it all. That is Stan's message to a T. So just the fact that this was the first film we got with him since he passed away. I just, like, it gives me goosebumps. Just like, that is the most perfect send-off of all send-offs. And yes, we're going to see him in Captain Marvel. We're going to see him in Avengers Endgame because he's filmed those cameos long ago. But this is just the perfect way to say goodbye to Stan. Remembering one of his most, if not his most, beloved creations. And celebrating... Everything that it stood for and everything that it instilled in us as kids. All the hope, all the excitement, all the adventure. It's all here. So clearly I can't sing the praises of Into the Spider-Verse enough. I've already seen it twice. It's crazy. I implore you to go watch this movie and just remember what it's like to be a Spider-Man fan. Because you all were. At some point or another, you all were. Don't lie. Especially you, Jordan. I see you lying over there. Trust me, you will have a great time and you are in for quite a few little surprises. Make sure you stay till after the credits.
Trust me. So that's Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. That has been thumbed together today. My name is Andrew Fantasia. Thank you so much, True Believers, for watching today. I will see you here next time. And until then, adios.